Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Uh, today's episode is going to be about the FCC and how it denied SpaceX about almost a billion dollars in funding due to some things that they think are going to happen, some speculation about Starship. So let's get right into the news here and talk about it. Let's have a discussion about this because I think it's a pretty important thing that SpaceX would lose almost a billion dollars. Now, recently, the SpaceX uh, Starship started launching IFT-1, IFT-2, hopefully IFT-3 at the beginning of next year. But the FCC is not all on board with the Starship yet. Uh, they recently confirmed that its previous decision from 2022 denied SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet service $885.5 million in rural broadband subsidies. Now, this decision came after SpaceX contested the initial ruling and they claimed that Starlink was capable of fulfilling the requirements of the subsidy program. The FCC's decision was primarily based on concerns regarding Starlink's ability to deliver on its promises. Now, Jessica Rosenworcel, the FCC chair, stated that the decision followed a thorough legal, technical, and policy review, concluding that SpaceX did not meet the criteria that was necessary. Now, a significant factor for the FCC's decision was the uncertainty surrounding SpaceX's Starship program. The FCC expressed doubts about the program's ability to support Starlink's objectives, specifically its commitment to providing high-speed internet to over 640,000 rural homes and businesses across 35 states of the United States. Now, SpaceX responded to the decision with disappointment and confusion, asserting that Starlink represents one of the best, if not the absolute best solutions for the goals of the rural internet program. Now, the company emphasized its commitment and its capability in addressing these rural broadband challenges in the future using Starship and currently using Falcon 9. Now, the FCC's ruling was not unanimous, though. There was dissent coming from two Republican commissioners. They argued that the decision was premature and possibly influenced by President Biden's administration and their unfavorable stance toward Elon Musk and all of his businesses. Now, Commissioner Brendan Carr even suggested that this move was part of a broader pattern of regulatory harassment against Elon Musk. Now, Musk, in response to the FCC decision, expressed his disbelief, advocating for the dissolution of the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund program. He highlighted Starlink's unique role in effectively addressing rural broadband issues at a significant scale. Because how are you going to do it on the ground? You can't do it on the ground. You have to go to space in order to... Um, you know, to solve these problems. Now, um, Nathan Simington, another Republican FCC commissioner, pointed out Starlink's substantial growth with over 2 million subscribers as of September of 2023. And he emphasized the ongoing expansion of Starlink satellite constellation, which he believed would enhance service quality and reliability in the future. Now, the heart of the FCC's latest order lies in the concerns about SpaceX's plan to use the Starship rocket for the second phase of Starlink's constellation. Now, this is where it gets weird. The commission cited the rocket's test flight failures and other technical challenges as reasons to doubt SpaceX's ability to fulfill the subsidy program's requirements. Now, we know that the Starship is a test vehicle, and the FCC knows that as well, uh, but they're not sure that SpaceX can get the Starship up and running in time to fulfill their commitments. Now, SpaceX's initial application for the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, the RDOF program, which secured them $885.5 million in subsidies, was followed by a more detailed long-form application. Now, this application, the second one, was key in assessing uh, SpaceX's capability to deploy an extensive and reliable network with the FCC ultimately found lacking. SpaceX's appeal against the Bureau's decision was based on their belief that the initial approval applied their capability to meet the RDOF requirements. However, the FCC disagreed, citing concerns about Starlink's performance and the viability of the Starship. And the FCC's decision also involved analyzing Starlink's performance data, primarily sourced from UCLA. Now, UCLA has nothing to do with SpaceX. They just measure traffic coming from different sources, whether it's uh, your regular broadband internet at your home, uh, you know, uh, anything like Wi-Fi, whatever, all of that, but also they measure traffic coming from Starlink satellites. So, and it's not exact. So they didn't get the data directly from SpaceX. So there could be, I wouldn't say corruption of the data, but possibly not perfect data. Now this data, which reflected the Starlink service quality in 2021 and 2022, was used to predict its capability 
in 2025. So 2021, 2022 to 2025. Now, if they can predict this and they know exactly how many Starlink satellites are going to space, I can understand where they could draw to some conclusions. But when the RDOF program were, was going to happen, is going to be 2025, and SpaceX should be ready for it by then if they get the uh, Starship up and running in the next few, uh, next year or so, uh, which I believe they will because they're going out to IFT3 um, early next year, according to the head of SpaceX development down at, or head of Starbase development, uh, Kathy Leaders, uh, who is formerly of NASA. And now she works at SpaceX and she thinks they're going to be doing the first launch in uh, 2024, early 2024 for the next round of tests. And if they can prove that Starship can launch more Starlinks, uh, the, uh, the FCC will probably have a legal battle on their hands. Now, SpaceX can test it, the relevance of the data because it didn't come directly from SpaceX, but the FCC maintained their position. And SpaceX reliance on the Starship program for launching a second generation Starlink satellites was another crucial point of concern for the FCC. The firm's decision to pivot solely to Starship for these launches, after initially considering the Falcon 9, they used the Falcon 9. It drew criticism and skepticism from competitors in the FCC too. So competitors getting a little say in this, uh, you know, kind of whisper in the ear of some people, I'm sure. And in its final response, SpaceX expressed its readiness to collaborate with the FCC to provide coverage to underserved areas. So despite this decision from the FCC, SpaceX said, hey, we're going to continue doing what you're doing. And if you're not going to give us money, we're going to keep doing it anyway, because we see a way out of this. And the company described the standards set by the FCC as just arbitrary, but showed willingness to work within these parameters. And Musk's reaction to the FCC's decision was in line with his general stance against the Biden administration's regulatory approach. He emphasized Starlink's unique contribution to solving rural broadband challenges it suggested that the RDOF program might be better off disbanded. Just get rid of it. Give the money back to the taxpayers, he said. And SpaceX, as of April 2023, has received $15.3 billion in government awards since 2003. And the financial significance of Starlink um, is huge. The revenue from Starlink is going to be a game changer for SpaceX because eventually when they continue to crank out Starlinks into uh, orbit, they will continue to generate money with every single one of those satellites launched and they will continue to amass subscribers for Starlink and they'll be able to pay for this. And they might even spin off an IPO of just Starlink as a service and as a, uh, as a company on its own. So there's a possibly there's a possibility that SpaceX just goes, we don't need your RODF money. We don't need this program money. We're going to do it ourselves because that's kind of, I mean, SpaceX does that already, but there's a possibility that they go, you know, too bad, you know, too bad RDOF, uh, uh, too, too bad um, FCC. We're going to do it on our own. And these people are going to pay us anyway. So your billion dollars, you know, that's a lot of money, but we're going to make it anyway on our own. So it's kind of what SpaceX does. I mean, they do rely on some funding from NASA and they do rely on some money from um Department of Defense, but they also make money on their own through Starlink already. So we're going to see where this goes. But despite these setbacks um, from the FCC, investor relations uh, with SpaceX and Starlink remain very, very high. So we're expecting them to IPO in the next few years once they have a stable distribution of Starlink satellites. It's going to be pretty wicked. They're going to make a bunch of money just from Starlink. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this. Do you think SpaceX is going to fight this or do you think they're just going to keep going forward? Let me know down in the comments. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know down in the comments what you think, because I think it's going to be a, a wild ride going forward. Everybody take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in the next episode. Make sure to check out that video over there and subscribe to the channel too. It helps me out tremendously. Super thanks. Super stickers. All the supers help out the channel as well. Thanks so much. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next one.